Welcome to the Rock the Stage Show. Each week, international media expert Rich Bontrager has in-depth and personal conversations with celebrities, top leaders, authors, speakers, and media professionals. Now, from the Rock the Stage studios, here's your host, the Trigger, Rich Bontrager. Welcome back. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's Rock to Stage show time, and we're going to have a great time tonight. I love Sandra D, who does the voiceover, and you've all seen Sandra many times here on the show. We still have big news coming with Sandra. But we talk to celebrities and movie film directors and everything else. Today, we're going to talk to an average Joe. <laughs> we're going to go completely the other direction. But you will find out that this guy is a rock star in his own right. And we are going to have a lot of fun. In fact, a few episodes ago, we briefly began discussing the power of smiling. Now, you may remember from that episode that I love Mondays because it kicks off an exciting new adventure week. I don't know what's going to happen. I smile. I love it because it's uncharted territory where many people find Mondays as the most down or dead, dumb day they want. They don't want to get out of bed. They don't want to go back to work. But that's not my philosophy in life. You know, studies have shown that people consider you more trustworthy when you make eye contact. We do that with camera media training and rock the stage, eye contact. You know, others will say that it it will open up others to respond properly to you when you smile toward them, and they have to smile back. It's almost instinctively. And also, it will lift your spirits if you smile more often. Let me ask you, are you a smiler? Are you a stoic? Are you one of those people, you're not going to get me to do it, not going to happen here, because tonight you're going to smile. I guarantee you somewhere tonight you will be smiling, because tonight my guest has become a social media rock star in his own right. We're going to tell you why. But Michael Ray has been ranked as a top 40 LinkedIn thought leader in 2022. He was a top 50 most impactful influential for the years 2020 and 2021 on LinkedIn. But most recently, he had been given a calling. He now wants to be the reason someone smiles today. Think about that. Not just any day, but today and every day. He wants to be the reason people smile. He is a welcome. We're going to welcome in the founder of the Smile Project, Michael Ray. And I bet you he's smiling. <laughs> I had my finger on the trigger, baby. Your intro had me going. I was amped up and ready to fire loose. So, yes, we uh, we hope today that we can bring some type of infectious energy um, and touch the soul to where they are left smiling and feel better about where they are in life. Now, did you ever think in an introduction you would just be called an average <laughs> Joe and you would appreciate that? You know what? You, you nailed it because... I, I think the good Lord has given me a lot of humility and it, I, I do look at myself. I'm just a random dude that all of a sudden, I guess, answered the call. And so, so yeah, I average Joe, a random dude, whatever it is, I'm, I'm no different than you or anyone else that wants to create positive change in this world. We've had actors, directors, movie stars, celebrities of all different sides, authors, but okay. I'm just going to set the record straight. So everyone knows this full disclosure. He is a strategic account manager in Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> That's I am, man. I'm in the manufacturing space of all things. <laughs> but yet, at the same time, as I said, from your LinkedIn accounts and things like that, you have broken through and found a space where you can shine and make an impact. You don't get in the top 40, top 50 of a global platform like LinkedIn without being unique and special in your own way, right? Yeah, you know, and, and, and when those things kind of, you know, took place and happened, I mean, it, it is humbling because, again, I go back to what you just said. I'm just some random dude that, um, and of all places, I mean, most people, when you think of social media influencers in some form or fashion, the last thing they probably mention is LinkedIn. It's generally, you know, Instagram, TikTok, you know, maybe Facebook, but but LinkedIn and I guess, you know, I, in wanting to create change, it was impacting, you know, added attitudes and behaviors of human beings. And I understood in what I went through that it was the impact personally and professionally. Yeah. 
you know, in that right. So of all places to where, and again, I'm on numerous platforms, but of all places that I've had the most impact globally, it's been LinkedIn. Well, and two-sided question. First of all, the top 40 LinkedIn thought leaders. Now, would you have ever been considering yourself as a thought leader? <laughs> Probably not. You know, I, I, I think that, and I often say, you know, we're amazing in our own right. And a lot of times when we find ourselves in these dark places in life yeah. and our mind takes over, we don't understand and realize how amazing we are. And I, I think that, you know, when, when I've been asked that question, I do have a unique energy about me that people saw the authenticity and in relationship that I had, you know, with so many people, primarily my daughter, that, um, they were touched. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I kind of got away and, and created that mindset of, I wanted the people, I wanted people to see and feel it. And in doing that, it wasn't wanting to do it through generally just giving them my thoughts and, and showing them a still image. <laughs> as we see, don't get me wrong, those things are good too, and I won't diminish any of the work that anyone else is doing in this space, but yet for me, probably 98% or more of what I've done has been the power of video. So it has been, you know, human interaction yeah. in very short bursts that is just very real and it's just life. Well, and it's interesting, you know, on LinkedIn, it's a business platform. You've been ranked the top 40 top 50 but it's a business platform and you're a guy that makes people smile <laughs> now people will ask you what does a smile have to do with success in my business what well i think, think it's how it's how we look and react to things and again for me it was you know challenges personally in life that had a tendency to bleed over into my professional life then then impacts success and outcomes you know in that space and and i said something to my daughter and this, this is going back now a couple of years ago that kind of leads to what you're talking about here and that is i don't have bad days i have bad moments because i don't allow those things to control me and if you have bad days bad days can lead to bad weeks bad months and therefore, then, you know, from what I've seen, because I'm, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm uh, a test case here in which when I became broken personally, yeah. it impacted my professional life. And then when you're broken professionally, it can impact your personal life. So it was really then when I talk about smiling, which is focusing on those things that made us joyful and feeling the love to bring that energy to us. Well, and get deeper into the backstory so people understand because now we're going to talk about the smile guy the smile guy but before the smile guy you had a double whammy of tragedies and again you, you were a father of twin boys and then you lost one of them very along with it was it three months four months it was, it was three months old yeah it was yeah. three months old as a father of twins myself i feel that pain and that joy but i can't even imagine the roller coaster because you're just beginning to figure out diaper changes and sleep <laughs> schedules and all those things that parents of twins go through is like, my life is over. And right. you know, there's all that. And then you have a daughter, Maddie with down syndrome. That's, That's a correct. lot for a parent, for any parent to take on and go through the Valley that you inevitably had to go through. So before we get into the smiles, yeah. Was that Valley part of the process to realize? Oh, it was a, it was a, it was a major part of that process. And, you know, having down syndrome, okay, yes, it's unique, but what makes my Maddie a little bit more unique is that she's nonverbal. Smile, be so happy that when others see you, they become happy too. Say goodbye. Yeah. And, and when I say nonverbal, she says maybe five or six singular words, has never put multiple words together. So it, it 
for, for me as a parent, and I would challenge anyone who's a parent, it's that simplicity that we always take for granted in life as a parent, is that at some point your child goes, I love you, dad. Yes. And I never, I've never experienced that with her. She has never been able to say those four simple words, you know, together. So the genesis of this is that, but yet there were all the cha challenges that surround being a parent of a Down syndrome child. She had open heart surgery. She had feeding issues. She had bathrooms. She didn't walk till she was after four, you know, so it's all of that. And then having three daughters first and not knowing, you know, as a married couple, when you, you have those discussions and you have three girls, and I guess as a father, you know, as, as a dad going and a man, I want a son. And then going, well, we didn't bargain to have twins. No. <laughs> so you're going from three to five. And the interesting thing is we didn't find out on the first three what the sex was, but we did you know, for our boys. Yeah. And I will tell you, you know, it, the mixed emotions of going, oh my gosh, we're going from three to five versus going, I'm having these twin boys. Yes. So it was a different level of excitement and anticipation and waiting for it. And then, you know, not until they're born, you find out, well, they're identical twin boys. So where the backside, you know, when you talk about the challenges and everything for me, yeah. it's hard enough losing a child as a parent, yet I always had this constant identical reminder of what my other son yes. would have looked like. Yes. Um, so, you know, that progression took me to some, to some dark places. Mm -hmm. And when I say dark places, I'm very specific and, and, and transparent about it is, you know, you get to the point of you feel like your life has no value because, again, it impacted me personally and professionally at that point where professionally oh. I was very successful in the mortgage industry at one point. And but yet you're like, I don't have a will to live anymore. Yeah. But I started circling back to, um, you know, my daughter and how she looked at life and that she just found joy in the simplicity of life. And a lot of that was just her family and friends. Yeah. Well, having been a father of twins myself, I, I understand. Now, our situation was we had an older daughter and we didn't know. We didn't want to peek. But we realized it could be a boy, girl, boy, boy could be girl girls and we're thinking really practical here shopping <laughs> if it's a boy or two boys all the girls stuff has got to go <laughs> right <laughs> so again I totally you're right paradigm. yeah and then from, from... and then i'm thinking of my daughters at their earliest age because they never looked in mirrors it was really fascinating they never looked in mirrors because they had a mirror of each other so when you touch on the aspect of you have a living representation of the one you lost all the time i cannot fathom that because together they just played and did and talked and everything else but to know you have that it's it's got to be part joy at this point in your life there's got to be part sorrow still because you're still missing something but you smile and laugh and you tell this story now to, to the world about a broken man who now smiles for a living. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, I, and I think we talked, we touched on it or scratched the surface before we, we started today. And that is, you know, sometimes from great pain and struggle can come great joy if you allow it. And I think for such a long period of time, and when I say long period, it was years, I didn't allow it. Yeah. It was It was more of, you know, God, why is this? Why did you do this to me? Why is this happening to me? And we play this as we a lot of us have probably heard, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. I didn't come up with that, but it's so true yes. because you start looking at your family and friends and others and you start going, well, why haven't they gone through anything, you know, in life? And you find yourself in that space. And again, that's why I think 
those dark spaces can be, well, I don't really provide any value to this world. So you know what? Maybe I just shouldn't live anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than again, focusing on, and Mother Teresa talked about it a lot, you know, the poor, the poorest of the poor beyond, you know, not, not diminishing homelessness and the things that we see in this country, but I'm talking about, you know, those living in India and dirt and all that. And she at times had talked about what such joy, even though their life wasn't easy and it was insanely hard. Cause in a lot of cases, they didn't know where their next meal was coming from, but yet they lived with such joy. Well, that's where I want to go to Maddie for a second. Because my neighbor was a Down syndrome child. And if you've never encountered personal interaction with Down syndrome, I have to warn you because they will turn you inside out in 30 seconds. Their eyes, their smile, their magnetism is usually very much of, hi, can I hug you? And I don't know any better. And immediately you're captivated by the awkwardness but the love and compassion at the same moment. And he hits you like, oh, I got to have fun with this kid. Is that how it is for you? Is that how it's been as you've gone on this mission to affect yeah. attitudes and behaviors with Maddie? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I thought about this years ago in which, and, and, and I laughed at the time when I said it, you know, like, God, this is probably the worst analogy, but I think there's so much truth in it. You know, when you're a dog owner, your dog to the master has this unconditional love to to the people in their life but yet you know you do have a lot of dogs too that that just enjoy human beings and that's what my maddie and those with down syndrome their wiring is uniquely different so so when you have this space of unconditional love and you add it with this component that I have seen, and that is they don't judge. Because when you judge, we perceive things. And I, I have this saying, your perception is your reality, but you don't know if it's true. So therefore then they don't judge. Again, it goes back to that love. They don't have the ability really to hate. So they occupy in this space of, of infectious energy enjoy and again as i i've been exposed to now in my my 25 years of life with my maddie um and and uh, countless if i had to guess at least probably two three hundred kids with down syndrome they all have the same wiring and yeah. it's as if they're yeah. like these angels on earth in how they can touch the lives of of complete strangers in the moment in a blink of an eye in a blink they, of an they, eye. they engage in their own way. Like you said, Maddie can't really speak, but there's a boom that hits and people just are like, I love you. <laughs> and there's this commonality of love. And I've seen it over and over myself. And it is the most amazing thing. And again, it usually is the smile. You can't ignore the power of that smile. In, no matter what your day is like, you get sucked into this is like, why am I smiling? Why am I grinning so hard? Why is my face? And you realize you're impacted by the smile of this Down syndrome child. Now I've seen some you, of your big daddy on some of your adventures to go give balloons and go give gift cards. What do you think Maddie's getting out of all this? You know, it's interesting because the the intellectual disability of those with Down syndrome widely varies mm -hmm. to where you can have some that graduate from high school and, and almost live on their own with an element of independence to where Maddie cannot. Um, and I would tell you, you know, our perception of Maddie is that she perceives like probably someone who's six to eight years old, mm -hmm. you know, can't read. Um, but yet, it just the simple acts of touching the life of another yes. is is joyful to her yeah. um you know again when, when COVID happened we were all you know panicking in some form or fashion and going you know life is a little different and it's harder to go to the grocery and and all the things that we were going through but yet 
I looked at her at times and was like, you have no idea and you don't care because you're just hanging out at home. And that's where your space is to where you're infinitely happy. So when you don't have this level of stress and anxiety and you live from this space of unconditional love, you know, so what does she feel? I think she just feels joy. Yeah. In, 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 in it's in, in its just most basic, simplest form. We think a lot of times in life, you know, to be happy and joyful, we're guided by things. You know, and, and, and to me, again, because of what I've been exposed to, yeah. it's really people. It's it's the love that we feel from those who make us happy and joyful. Um is the space that that she and that I try to impress upon people to operate from. So Smile Project Louisville starts in Louisville, but you now go around and you people nominate others to get a smile award or whatever you've called this now, and you surprise them and walk in and what happens? Because I've seen them in the videos. Do do they know they're nominated? Do they know you're coming? Do you just pop in? No, and we've done hundreds. Um, and when I say hundreds, probably easily three, four hundred. Um, and, and again, the genesis was here. And when it first started, I was putting myself in situations where it was complete strangers. And, and I often had this moment of, you know, look, I, I try not to put my faith on people, but being a faithful man, I looked at it going, all right, Holy Spirit, tell me who in the hell today that we need to go make smiles and feel kind of love. But as I did that, and then I started sharing this, and of all the ones we have done, no one has ever known, has ever known we're coming, it's <coughs> happening. But I started sharing those moments on social media and that's how it really kind of transitioned and segued into well where in the hell are you finding these people <laughs> and then people started reaching out to me and telling me the stories of what people were going through in life and i was like okay wow tell me more and i was like okay maybe this is something that that would be very unique um, and as I started doing more and more of those, and this is kind of where about five years or so ago, my LinkedIn journey started is that I wasn't sharing it on LinkedIn, but some friends of mine that I went to church with locally kept pushing me to share it on LinkedIn. Cause as you said earlier, you know, it's a business platform and I looked yeah. at it going, no, this is not, this is Facebook or, you know, it's not. But but after literally being pushed for months, I decided to share some of these interactions on Facebook. And let's call it what it is. You know, it's no different than, you know, probably a TV show. We're not a TV show, but, you know, where people start talking about it and telling you how, how it makes them feel. Yes. And then I started sharing it, and then it resonated with people. So I've seen some of your videos, and you kept them by surprise, things like that. Their initial reaction is like, who the heck is this guy with this funny grin on his face? They're kind of like taken back a little bit because you are on, buddy. You are really on. But then as they begin to loosen up and loosen up, I've seen people that first start off like looking at their co-works and stuff. They're like, how, how do I get out of this? And then you give them a hug. You give them a handshake. You give them a fist bump. You do something. And then they see, hey, he's okay. He's cool. And then they open up. By the end, people are giving you extra hugs. Because it went from a stranger danger to I'm infected by this guy that we're all smiling and laughing or crying, and they give you hugs after hugs. What I love for you to do first is I love to ask people, what makes you amazing? Uh, what makes me amazing is I'm a, I'm, I'm a good-hearted person. I don't want nothing from nobody, really. I just want to see everybody be happy, copacetic, and prosper. I want to watch everybody... Be, be who they are to the best of their abilities. Man, that makes me want to kiss you because that's so damn beautiful, baby. So for the people who love what I do tonight in a special way, 
we are going to bless you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay? I have five hundred dollars. <laughs> So love in this world, my friend. Okay. There is some sort of thing that you must emanate where I'm safe, I'm trustworthy, and let's have fun doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, I've often thought, you know, thought and felt that. And I would tell you, you know, again, the interesting thing about this is, you know, imagine watching a hundred videos and then I come to your city and then you're with me. And what people were seeing then was the other side of the camera where they were watching it, but then you're actually seeing it. And let me be clear here too. These things are not long drawn out things. You know, we're not, not taking all. five, 10, 15 minutes. In a lot of cases, it's within a matter of a few minutes. And, and knowing, and I felt it immediately, you have to be able to put people at ease immediately because I'm in their personal space. I'm close. In a lot of cases, I'm literally hugging or have my arm around them. So I'm curious. This year, 2024, I think this is probably my fourth or fifth interview in the kindness, joy, smile space category. People are now, and again, this is my take on it. I'm curious about yours. So when you talk about a growing movement, the beautiful thing is I have had countless people who have reached out behind the scenes and have sent me messages of things that they have watched and seen and they have done something themselves and have felt the joy. And that's what you're looking for is, you know, again, when they talk about, you know, one random act of kindness can change the world. Well, in some form or fashion, yeah, it's, it's hard to fathom it, but the ripple effect, because again, when it does change you, it changes the people around you. They feel that, you know, so, so yes, I, I would like to think and subscribe to exactly what you said. Um, and look, a lot of times on TV, if you choose to watch that, it's, it's too much of the negativity. Yes. If it's news related, yes. you know, if you get into programming, I mean, sometimes it's twisted and everything else, you know, so a little bit of dose of good, positive, infectious, loving energy goes a lot longer than the human mind understands and thinks at times. And it does. And you're not filming with a big camera crew. It looks pretty much like iPhone or basic, whatever you've got, you've used. You nailed it. It's an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so I want people to understand, you're not going in there with all this glitz and glam. It's no. like anyone can grab their phone, do what you're doing. But the fact is, you're doing it and you're putting it out there to make an impact. And obviously, it's making a huge impact. How has this changed your life? How has this personally impacted Michael? Oh, I mean, overwhelmingly, because, you know, again, look, as I said earlier, I'm a human being and, and we do still have challenges in life. So, again, it's how we react and how we choose. We make we, we tell our children this all the time. We're a product of our choices. Yeah. So I choose now, even though I may have a bad moment it doesn't impact my my day in the relationships of of others so you know what i have seen and felt you know again especially in asking the questions to people um that, that have gone through such great adversity um it, it is it is that level of happiness and joy in life in which we are all are chasing at times yeah you know, and, and, and I do rewind in my life and I was chasing what my dad used to say is the almighty dollar because I felt like my happiness was defined by having a bigger house or bigger car and those things. And now life moves so much slower, you know, for me and I enjoy the moments. <laughs> well, you have an amazing website. I want to let everyone know about this. You do want to go check out and learn about the Smile Project in Louisville. And what are they going to find besides your big smiling mug there? 
Right. And you know what's funny is I don't know why it's it, 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 that to me wasn't necessarily a smile, but how I became insanely joyful. And it somewhat for me just kind of became my trademark way of smiling. <laughs> Because you got information about, you have causes, you, you have information on how to uh, nominate somebody. What else is on that website? Um, you know, stories, um, you know, my background and kind of, you know, snippets of what I went through, um, uh, videos, news stories. Um, like you said, the ability to nominate others um, that, that need a dose of love and positivity and, and a smile in their day in life. So as we wind down, let me ask you that. People talk about you, but this is a one-two punch with you and Maddie very often. She can't speak. She has Down syndrome. But she had become an influencer herself. Oh, 100%. Now, she may not know and understand that, but you do and your family members do. What does that mean to you that in her own simplistic way, she really is having an impact on a large number of people? Parents who have children with Down syndrome actively talk about this is that there's a feeling of loss and grief. So a lot of times I go back to that place to where I've come now to where it is that place of such, you know, joy. But, you know, we tell our kids who are, excuse me, five, six years old, they're rock stars all the time. Yes. But they don't perceive it like us. And and again, that level of, of humility with, with those with Down syndrome, and in this case, Maddie, she's impacted so many lives and she has oh. no idea. Yes. <laughs> and that's okay. You know, she's just doing that thing and, and angelic and, um, you know, so never knowing and understanding but I, I think for me it had to really manifest itself through a lot in life to truly find a place and as a father and understanding and not only understanding but really appreciating what i was given that i was chosen you know so and it's it's a blessing and i'm grateful now and and given because i've been asked this question too would you ever change or make her normal? No, because to me, she is normal. Exactly. And she is communicating louder than anybody in a lot of rooms <laughs> by simply being Maddie. And you would never but want not to say the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I think that's one of the most powerful things. That's why I kind of opened up the show and kind of teased it a little bit. But you're just an average dude. But you're doing amazing, influential impactful things in people's life and michael ray keep doing it man keep doing it brother thank you my friend absolutely we're not michael stopping anytime soon <laughs> <laughs> michael ray again he is the founder of the smile project louisville but it's much much bigger than that and again i do think it's wonderful to step back and realize he's gone through the dumps he's gone through the pains he's got the war rooms to show it but as you can see the smile, the laughter, the ability to share that in a way to be contagious and help lift everybody. He's on a mission to make people smile every day. Think about that. Can you take that mantle on with him? Wherever you live, whatever your cubicle is, you don't have to be a rock star. You don't have to be a celebrity. You don't have to be anything other than be you, which is maybe the biggest message out of all this. Maddie's just simply being Maddie. And I think dad's going for the ride, by the way. I, I don't think he realizes it maybe, but he's going for the ride. Maddie's taking him on the journey. And it's really simple to do that. Hey, that's going to do it for this edition of Rock the State Show. We're going to be back our next week, Sunday night, 7 o'clock. Always interesting conversation with amazing people, life histories. Yeah, some are film directors, some are actors, but some are people just doing amazing rock star things. And we have to have them here on Rock the Stage Show for another highly unscripted conversation. Join us on PPM, the Public Place Network. You can stream it globally. We're in 17 different countries on PPN and, of course, on YouTube. We're Sunday nights. You can join the live chat. Yeah, there's a live chat going on right now watching this episode. Join the conversation. Subscribe to the channel. Share your thoughts on each and every episode that we gather together Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern time, for another edition of Rock the Stage Show.